it going, gentlemen? So we brought you here today because I've been working at Lex Steel for over three years now, and as you can see by our profit and loss chart, you know we've had an increase in our expenses and a decrease in our profit. So as you can tell by that, Lex Steel has not been making money over the past three years, and we wanted you guys, we wanted to bring you guys here as consultants to come in and see if there's any issues with our ex expenditure cycle, so you guys could detect any possible threads or any issues that we're having, and come in and fix it. Well, just by looking at the graph right here, I can clearly see some things that maybe work on as well as something that can improve on, not necessarily that it's bad. However, um, I'm going to take this information and if you can share that with me as well, I can discuss it with my team and we can go consult about this. And then later in about a week, we can come back with some answers and provide some solutions for your situation as well. Cool. Sounds perfect. Thank you. Have a good day. So after carefully speaking with um, my consultant team and I, we have carefully come up with some solutions that could potentially help um, improve your gross profits as well as reduce your expenses. Um, if you carefully pay attention to this PowerPoint, we can present it for you. It has some issues that we see within the expenditure cycle that you've been facing as well as how to go about improving that. And I'm going to go on and move on, give the floor to Joyce so she can um, explain to you the first issue that we see currently as well. In this expenditure cycle for the company of Lexiel, the company's primary step is to determine which supplies and how much is necessary in order to satisfy the demand for the products. The issuance of material is then followed by actually ordering of such materials from the trusted suppliers. After the order has been processed and shipped to the company, the receiving clerks take inventory of the shipment. Once all of the inventory has been properly stored, the production department is now able to utilize the supplies. Simultaneously, the company receives the invoice for the shipment, which will then lead the company's payment for their supplies ordered as the final step of the cycle. One of the activities that you um, discussed about is um, paying back your suppliers. So because of cash flow problems, Lexia always pays suppliers on the last possible day before incurring a penalty for late payment. Supplier invoices are processed and paid weekly. Every Friday, the accounts payable clerk reviews and approves all invoices with a due date the following week. So some of the ins um, issues that we see right off the bat is, first of all, there should be a separation of powers right here. Um, you shouldn't be having one person just always doing a certain task and being responsible for all of that. There should be a separation of duties where one person is going to maybe um, process the invoices and after that the accounts payable is going to then do that separately and, and actually process the checks and make sure that the payments are going out. However, um, something that that also prevents is that uh, a separation of powers can also help uh, create or minimize internal threats such as theft within the company. Sometimes um, the fact that a separation duty is not um, implemented within a certain procedure that can cause um, maybe uh, late payments being uh, late payments occurring because maybe the person that's in charge of paying for them is actually not processing those payments and keeping the profits for themselves instead. So that's something that could potentially be an issue within your uh, process. Going on with this, um, batch processing is a system that many companies use to pay their suppliers. It's very important because um, it actually creates a, a useful system where the treasurer can use inquiry processing system to review invoices that are uh, due and then approves them for payment um, based on your suppliers that are most important and the ones that um, may necessarily not need to be paid right away or can be paid later on. You can create a system where some payments um, for the larger payments or for the large suppliers are being issued uh, via financial electronic data, which is um, an, also known as a financial electronic data interchange, which it still prints paper checks for many of the small suppliers, but at the same time, it processes uh, automatic checks via online for the suppliers that need to be paid before the uh, um, raw materials are even due. Um, another issue that we see is that because your uh, cash flow problems are, or your cash flow is slowly decreasing and you're not having that much income as well in order to pay for those expenses, some payments should be made to suppliers as soon as possible. However, if there's not enough cash on hand to pay, a loan should then be taken out in order to prior prioritize which vendors to pay um, right off the bat. Um, and one thing that's can help off with is just by paying off these suppliers with the loan they use, you can also incur a discount as well because you're paying them on time or before the due date, which can also help reduce the cost of how much is due. And these are just some things that we've seen within this specific uh, instance for next deal. All right, the problem that I noticed that you guys were having was that you're Purchasing managers were reviewing and approving all of the purchases prior to emailing them to the supplier. And this can cause a lot of problems to your company because sometimes when you're emailing the suppliers and they don't have the inventory they need, 
then you're stuck without the supplies. And another problem that this can cause is potential fraud by the purchasing manager because he will be the one asking for the purchases and approving everything. So there can be some potential losses to the company. So another issue that we found that we can improve on in your company is that after accounting and inspecting incoming deliveries, the receiving clerk enters the following information into the system, which are quantities received for each inventory item, date and time receives, and supplier number. So some of the things that you can improve on is um, requiring more information for each shipment um, by including information such as uh, supplier name, address, invoice number, and scanning the invoice in order to save it onto your personal accounts. Uh, secondly, we can also incorporate barcodes on each item in order to scan and record the inventory items so that the managers can easily keep track of the shipments. And lastly, we can um, sign, and sign and approve the managers to confirm the delivery and prevent more theft. So one issue I see with activity four is that it correlates with activity three. The reason being is because after um, entering information, the receiving clerk takes the inventory to the inventory control department and actually stores it himself or him or her. Um, an issue I see with this is that we need a separation of powers included in this um, process just because the person that's inputting the information should not necessarily be um, the one that's um, responsible for storing um, the inventory as well just because whatever he puts down on record may not necessarily correspond with what's, with what's in the storage room. Um, this person could be uh, committing theft or fraud by making um, sure that uh, whatever is on the information sheet doesn't add up with it and because he is the one that authorizes that and signs that off, he has no control, he has total control of that and none of us would be able to tell any um, uh, discrepancy that is uh, happening or any type of fraud. However, by having periodic audits from the upper power, that can actually prevent this issue from happening or even occurring just because they can make sure that whatever is recorded from the inventory delivery matches up with what's in storage. And this can help reduce costs because you're not necessarily having internal theft occurring within your facility and it could just um, help you maximize costs as well, minimize costs and maximize profits. Um, we recognize that inventory is only released to production when a properly authorized request is received. When the inventory is released, the inventory control clerk updates the perpetual inventory system. Um, we discussed and we realized that Lexi would be more fully operational if the inventory should be automatically restocked when used. Um, a perpetual inventory system is effective. However, physical accounts are essential to ensure that inventory is accurate in the system and stock. And our last recommendation is to incorporate a vendor managed inventory model, which allows suppliers, which gives suppliers access to sales and inventory data and other authorized to automatically replenish inventory when stocks fall to predetermined reorder points. I've noticed that the access to the inventory control department is restricted, and this will help prevent theft and loss from unauthorized users. However, this Responsibility should not be tasked to one individual, but multiple people. These multiple people should have extensive background checks. And another possibility or solution we can use is increased security through personnel or security equipment. Yeah. All right. So when looking at the uh, some of the current processes that you guys are using, we've noticed a couple areas where there's definitely some room for improvement. So when actually taking physical inventory counts, uh, you stated that you do it every three months. We definitely want to take that down to about every month or a monthly count. Once you actually complete the count, what we're going to do is have you upload it. It's going to be input into a terminal, into a database. Then the inventory counts are going to be compared and checked for accuracy by a manager, and they're going to be signed off. So the counts are going to either be approved or denied by that manager. If they're not approved, then an investigation is going to be launched into the cause of the missing inventory. Um, if they are, if everything does align, then you'll be good to go. No further action needed. So here we have the uh, the updates for Lex Steel's receiving goods process. So we have made a couple changes to the flowchart here. So initially, you receive the goods, fill out the receiving report 
and then go ahead and put that report into the terminal to go into a batch processing database. Um, the main issue with that is it was one person handling all the duties. We wanted to make sure there was a separation of the duties there. So uh, this is actually going to be sent to the inventory control department and they're going to verify all this information, check the physical inventory counts as well. So when we were going over the purchasing procedures at Lex Steel, we noticed there were a couple issues that leave some room for some error. So our recommendation is to start with the supplier invoice. That's going to be input into a terminal. Then it's going to go into a batch processing, a, uh, an automated system that's going to let you know exactly what you need to order, how much, what's currently being used. Um, before any orders are made, that's going to have to be approved by a manager. Currently you're making orders without getting that approval or without actually contacting the vendors, which is going to leave you uh, some risk for ordering something that's not going to be in stock. So we definitely want to get the approval by a manager, and then if it's approved, it's going to be ordered. If it's not approved, then we need to restart and just make sure that the vendors are being contacted, the inventory is being uh, consulted. So another, note, another problem we found with Lex Steel Corporation is that physical counts of inventory are taken in every three months. And another thing is that discrepancies between the counts and recorded quantities on hand are investigated. Upon resolution of, of the investigation, the plant manager authorized the adjustments to the perpetual inventory records to change them to the amount actually on hand. Now there's a huge issue with that and we presented our own resolution for that. And one thing we, we found as a resolution was that the length of between physical inventory counts is too long. This makes it more difficult to investigate the cause of missing inventory. Another thing is that a better system would be to count inventory on a monthly basis and have management sign off on the counts. And another thing too is that the plant manager authorizing the adjustments should be audited on a monthly basis. And another thing we suggested is that we should have these receiving reports and my, my buddy Walter right here is going to continue on to that. Hey, so the receiving reports are details about each delivery, including the date received, the shipper, and the purchase order number. For each item received, it shows the item number, description, unit of measure, and the quantity. The receiving report also contains space to identify persons who received and inspected the goods, as well for the remarks concerning the quality of the items received. See, I told you guys, you spend a little bit of money on a proper accounting information system and profits will shoot right up. It's just like our accounting information systems professor told us. You avoid the shady stuff, you won't get the F minus. <laughs> yeah. Essential if you want good profits. Because we listened to Daniel Almendares and how do you pronounce his name? Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty good, yeah. I was going to say, I love that guy. <laughs> yeah. Here, wait, we saw shoot up. It's just like Daniel Almendares told us. You don't do that shady shit, you... <laughs> <laughs> and mine is... <laughs> okay, so in this expenditure cycle for the company, I looked at the camera, I'm sorry. We reviewed everything, and we concluded that shady stuff equals F minus. Okay. <laughs>